Hello everybody! Today I'm going to show you how you can utilize your timeline better. I recently was trying to figure out some options that I saw someone do in a video with their timeline and they didn't explain how they did some things with it and I couldn't find any videos on YouTube explaining it so I've been playing around with it for about a month now and learned how to do a lot of it and thought I'd share it here so you guys don't have the same struggle I do and you can just look it up now on YouTube. So the first thing we're going to need is a scene to show kind of some of the options off. So I'm going to get one from Moho themselves. If you notice when you boot up Moho you kind of get some of these scenes. You can get them from the file, import, library, and I'm going to get one from Anime Studio 11, The Space Woman. This one's a pretty popular one. Hit check all, okay. And there is our scene now. And if you hit play, as you can see, it's animated already, which is good because we kind of need that to be able to uh, mess around with the animation points later so I can show you how certain options work. Now as you're noticing down here I have this showing up so you can see what keys I'm pushing so I don't have to tell you each time. Ignore the experience key because that's just because I didn't pay for a subscription fee to the service so that just pops up unless I pay like three or four dollars or something a month to get rid of it and I'm not going to do that. So only anything after the experience key is important. Alright so getting into this we're going to go to, oh, we're already on frame zero, that's good. And the first thing I'm going to show is how to get rid of all these excess windows so you just have this window. So I'm going to hit Alt or Option and 1. And as you can see, now we just have this window. You can play your animation, go back to the beginning. Now, if you want to bring all that back, it is the exact same button, Alt and 1. And it brings all that back. So you have all your windows here. The next thing you can do is you can actually edit where your animation starts. If you just leave it Alt and drag. No, that is, well, actually, this is a good one. So Alt and click, you can actually do kind of a cut. So you can play it from that point instead. But there are other ways you can actually do that too. So say you don't want to cut out a certain point or you're like way far on the timeline, like, Let's skip down here, and you just want to check something in this little sequence right here, but you don't want to drag the timeline all the way over here for any reason. You can actually just put in a little window, or a little marker, by hitting Command and clicking, and that will start your animation from this point. Another thing you can do is you can move your animation simply by holding Control and then clicking. This will move your animation start point. Now, bear in mind when you're doing this, this only moves the layer you are on. So you'll notice her shadow is not moving with her. That's because her shadow is a reference layer and it's already animated to what she's animated at frame zero. And just because you're grabbing and dragging this doesn't mean you're not on frame zero anymore. This is still her frame zero referenced by this little arrow point here. I believe, though, if we move these regularly, it would also move. So let's see what happens if we do that. Let's see if the bottom layer moved. Yeah, so if you move the points... Wait, did they? No, they're out of sync. Okay, never mind. I thought that would work, but it does not. So I'm going to put everything back. The next thing you can do is you can actually hide your timeline. And that would be using these keys. As you can see, now we just got this window. Same keys to put it back. Um, you can also bring up onion skinning. Now, normally you just can cl click this. It's not very far, and it's not hard. You can even add in little onion skin areas. So if you're in between these two points and editing. Why isn't it popping up? Oh, there should be a little bit of green. Oh, interesting. Why is it moving with it? What's the after image? It's because there's a background? That's why. Okay. So you have to get rid of your background. I did not know that until just now. So as you can see, there's a before and after image. And if you want to, you can even add more images into it. So you can kind of see what you're working with. Or you can just have one or two. So you're just clicking right here. Now, if you want the shortcut to bring that up, it's just Command L. And as you can see, it turned it off. Actually, let me put them back in so you can see. So I'll put one here and one over here. 
So you can see the two after images, and then Command L turns it off, Command L turns it back on. All right, let's bring that background back up. Um, the next thing is, uh, let's condense our points. So if you select a bunch of points, and you want to stretch out, say the animation feels too fast, and you want to just stretch it out. If you hold down Alt and click and drag, it'll stretch that out for you. So as you can see, based on her after image, she's moving much slower. Let's put that back. There we go. All right. Um, what else can you customize? Uh, oh, you can customize your markers. This is the one that actually interests me to look into this. So let's say we've just got um, look behind, like if you were just going to put this in as a note. So this is the point where, yeah, she turns behind, so we'll just move it there. And let's say you wanted to extend it to show how long she looks behind herself. If you hold down Alt and click and drag, you can stretch that out, actually. And if you didn't know this, you can actually change the color of these points by just right-clicking them and then going down to Label, and there you go, different color now. And it'll change the entire window itself so you can have kind of colored points. So you can put like another one here, we'll just call this Test and stretch it out. And that way you can kind of label where your animation has different color in it. And these will actually go across different, I guess, timelines, uh, animation lines, whatever you want to call them. So if you're animating in one window and you need to animate something like a laser or something, but you need to know where it comes in, you've still got this to look for. Another thing you can do in editing is if you want to grab just specific points and you just grab these and you're like, oh shoot, I, I didn't want some of these. You can hold down command and click and you can let go of these points. That way you don't have to be super precise. You can just grab a bunch of points and then you can just get rid of the ones you didn't want to grab. The only other real thing you can kind of do in the timeline using kind of command keys before you have to go to start using tabs would be using con yeah, control and you can click. This can allow you to drag and move around in your timeline without interacting with anything. That way you don't have to use your kind of scroll wheels. So if you're just looking for something, you can just use that. Um, the only other kind of stuff you can do is add maybe keyframes, which you can do that, I believe, from animation. Um, yeah, you can add a keyframe if you'd like. The last thing you can honestly only do is in the animation timeline, uh, there's a lot in here you can do to mess with your timeline, but most of these we kind of did with the shortcuts. But the only thing that I so far have not found a shortcut for would be copy deep frames. And I'm going to show you what that does. So you're going to want to grab, I'm going to grab them all. Well, actually, let's just grab this one and this one to show you what it does. So you're going to go to animation, copy deep frames, and then I'm going to just go all the way here past the end, and I'm going to click Paste Deep Frames. You can also do Copy Deep Frame Range, but right now we're just going to show what this does. And as you can see, it copied the original start layer of our animation. Didn't put her back at the beginning though, I thought it would. Let's see what happens if we now do Copy Deep Frame Range, jump a little ahead, and then we'll do Paste Deep Frames. Now, it should take a second. There we go. As you can see, it copied, it pasted a lot of animation frames. And if we were to play this out, let's just, as you can see, it's playing out the animation. It's a little choppier and it's not as good, but it's about the same animation that is at the beginning here. So yeah, that is in kind of a nutshell what you can do with your animation kind of timeline. And I hope you found this video helpful. If there was something I missed and you think that should be in this video, let me know down in the comments. Uh, that way I can pin it and hopefully other people will see it too.